Hey everyone, got a new Mac, and thanks to my wife for getting me my new Mac for Christmas. Today we're gonna to go over five essential tips to get your new Mac all set up and personalized the way you like it. Tip number one is to customize your system settings to set up your Mac the way you like it. We're gonna go into our system settings. First thing we're gonna look at is appearance. In appearance, you can choose whether your Mac is in dark mode light mode or auto. So auto is gonna change what, whether you're in dark mode or light mode based on the amount of light around you. Whether you're sitting in a dark room, whether you're in a bright sunny day, etc. I like dark mode, but I will show you here. If I click on light mode, this is what light mode looks like. Back to dark mode, you get the idea. Now, next we're gonna to go to desktop and dock. So your dock is this area at the bottom with all these icons and we can change how it looks and behaves. For example, magnification. If you used a Mac years ago, you'll know that magnification used to default to something more like this. When you roll your mouse across, you can see this magnification effect happening. That's not the default anymore, but it's still there if that's something you like. I'm gonna keep mine at the default here, which means they're not gonna jump up at me when I move my mouse across them. Now the position of your dock on the screen can be changed as well. By default, it's on the bottom. If you like to have it on the right-hand side or the left-hand side, you are welcome to do so. I personally prefer mine on the bottom. That's where I'm gonna keep it. The minimize effect. Um, so if I bring up a window and then I minimize it, you'll see it has that kind of genie effect. You can change that to be scale effect. That's more like how, uh, if you're coming from Windows, that's more of the animation they use. It's just kind of, I don't know how to describe it, a scale effect. I like Genie effect, so I'm gonna leave mine on Genie. You can change what double clicking the Windows title bar does. For example, if you want to double click the title bar to minimize, you can do that. There's all kinds of other settings in here you can change. Those are just kind of the most frequent, the most, uh, the ones I see change the most often. Now in some of these settings here relating to the desktop, you're gonna see stage manager referenced. Let me just uh, take a little, take you off to the side here and show you what stage manager is in case you're curious. So let me just open a few different windows here because stage manager is easier to demonstrate if we have some windows open. So I got some windows open. I'm gonna go up here to my control center and I'm going to turn on stage manager. Now, as soon as I did that, what you'll notice is that only one window is active in my view. Only one window is front and center. Stage Manager allows me to focus on one window at a time, and it moves my other windows into what are called stacks over on the left. So for example, if I wanted to change from my music window here to my Chrome, I just click on it on the left, and it's gonna bring Chrome front and center. Now, if I wanted to switch over to Safari, again, it's gonna swap them. Chrome's gonna be over on my stacks, Safari is gonna be front and center. If I wanna bring my system settings up, there it is, front and center, it moves Safari over to the stacks on the left. So Stage Manager allows you to focus better by keeping one window front and center and moving the rest out of the way. That's Stage Manager. I just wanted to mention it because you're gonna see Stage Manager referenced in some of the settings we're looking at. Now, while we're in our system settings here, let's have a look at Trackpad, if you're on a MacBook, or MacBook Pro, uh, there's a lot you can do with the trackpad. So it's good to get in here and have a look at what is configured. Your tracking speed is how quickly your cursor moves across the screen. So as I move my finger back and forth, you can see how, how quickly that's moving. If you want it to move faster, obviously drag the slider to the right. If you want it to move slower, drag it to the left. You can uh, specify how much pressure is needed to click on the trackpad. Secondary click is very good to know, especially if you're coming from a Windows environment or you're used to having a right click button. Just know that Mac OS calls it a secondary click. And by default, that is to click with two fingers. So if I press down on my trackpad with two fingers, that's going to basically imitate what Windows users would call a right click. Again, in Mac, it's a secondary click. So if I'm in my finder here and I want to right click on this document, I just press down with two fingers and that brings up that right click menu or secondary click menu. There is a tap to click. If you're coming from a laptop that had this, you might wanna turn this on, which is basically when you just tap your finger lightly on the trackpad, it'll simulate a click. By default, you have to actually push down with some pressure to click on the, the trackpad on your MacBook. 
If we go over to the scroll and zoom tab here, uh, there's some things I'd like you to take a look at. For example, zoom in or out. So you can pinch to zoom in or out on things like pictures, just like you would on your iPhone. Um, same with rotate. You can rotate using two fingers on your trackpad, just like you would on a mobile device. Under more gestures here, um, you can see that swiping between pages means you can scroll left to right with two fingers, just like that, kind of like you would on the phone. You can see that we can bring up mission control by swiping up with three fingers. So if I swipe up with three fingers, that brings up what's called mission control. It basically allows us to see all of our windows in one place. You could also separate your windows into multiple desktops. So up here you can see I have one desktop, but if I wanted to add another one, I could, then I could take a window and drag it to that desktop and I can switch back and forth between my desktops like so. There is show desktop, which says spread with thumb and three fingers. So if I take my thumb and three fingers and spread them apart, that's going to show my desktop. And if I squeeze them back, that'll bring my desktop back. A lot of these are kind of easier to do once yourself, so you kind of understand, but it does show you up here what these gestures look like. So that was customizing your system settings. It can be nice to kind of change things up a little bit and make the Mac feel like it's truly yours. Tip number two is to optimize your iCloud settings. We're gonna go into our system settings again, and we're gonna click on our name at the top left. Now this is your iCloud settings. What I specifically wanna do here is go into the iCloud section, and you wanna determine what you want to have saved to iCloud. And this will in part depend on what kind of an iCloud subscription you have, if any, how much storage you have, uh, will determine how much you want to sync to iCloud. Do you want your photos syncing to iCloud? Do you want your messages syncing to iCloud? Your notes, your mail, etc., etc. You get the point. It's just good to go in here and see what you have set up, what's syncing, what's not, so you kind of know where you're at with iCloud. Tip number three is to install your essential apps. This is based on you. It's what you use the most, but you should know how to install apps, where to get them, um, and how to install them. So there's two main ways to install apps on your Mac. One is through the App Store, which if you are an iPhone or iPad user, you're already familiar with. You can launch the App Store, you can search it for apps, and you can install them with one click, just like you can on your iPhone or iPad. The other way I will show you, let's say we didn't, I, I have Chrome on here, but let's say we didn't and we wanted to go install Chrome, we could go to google.com slash Chrome, and it's gonna say download Chrome. I'm going to show you what happens when I download Chrome. You'll notice it's downloading a file with a DMG extension. This is a disk image file, and I will show you what to do with it in just a moment here while, once this is finished downloading. So, you'll see it popped up in my little downloads stack here. I can just click on it, and it brings up this window. So what it wants me to do is drag the Chrome icon into my Applications folder, and that's all you have to do to install applications on your Mac from a disk image file. You're just dragging the application into your Applications folder. So I'm going to take Chrome and just drag it down. I already have it installed here, so I'm not going to overwrite it, but you get the idea. One thing you might notice when you're working with disk images is if I go into my Finder here, you're going to see that there's a Google Chrome disk image mounted still. If you want to unmount it, just click this little eject icon here, and that unmounts the disk image. And once Chrome is installed, you're free to go to your downloads and delete that disk image file if you wish. Tip number four is to master some keyboard shortcuts. Keyboard shortcuts to make, can make your life a lot easier, can make you more productive, and uh, just make using your Mac a lot more enjoyable. The most common one that I use all the time is Command Space. That brings up your Spotlight search box. From Spotlight Search, you can search for files, applications, anything you want on your Mac. Let's say I want to open music. I just start typing music. You can see it auto-populates. I can hit enter. My music is now open. So Spotlight Search is super handy. You can launch things very quickly rather than going to your Finder and browsing through your Applications folder and all that. Just Command, Spacebar, search for the name of the application you want to launch, and press enter. Something I do a lot as a content creator is I take a lot of screenshots and screen grabs and whatnot. Uh, being able to quickly access the screenshot tool or capture tool uh, can be done with a keyboard shortcut. If I press Shift Command 5, 
it's going to bring up this window. So I could grab the part of the desktop that I want to capture and press capture. I can go in here and specify all kinds of options. So that is how you quickly take a screenshot. If you're coming from a Windows environment and you're used to shortcuts such as Control C to copy and Control V to paste and Control X to cut and all that kind of stuff, you can do all that on Mac too. You just use Command instead of Control. So Command C will copy, Command V will paste, Command X will cut, etc. All those keyboard shortcuts still work. You just use the Command key instead of the Control key. I'm going to drop a link uh, below this video to Apple's document that lists pretty much every known keyboard shortcut out there. Um, feel free to peruse that, find your favorites, and use them frequently as it does save a lot of time. Once you start using shortcuts, there's no going back. Tip number five is to enhance your security and your privacy on your new Mac. We're going to head back into our system settings here. We're going to go to privacy and security. Now here's where you can see which apps have requested which permissions. So for example, uh, files and folders. Two apps have requested access to my files and folders. And in this case, both are apps I recognize and trust. But it's good to have a browse through here um, and make sure that there's nothing strange going on. The other thing I want to show you in here is File Vault. What File Vault is, is a disk encryption tool. So what it's doing is it's encrypting all the data that's on your hard drive. So if you've got a MacBook specifically, um, let's say someone were to steal it and rip the hard drive out and go plug it into another computer, they're still not going to be able to access the data on that drive because it's encrypted and your password is needed to decrypt it. So I recommend having File Vault turned on if you haven't done so already. Uh, it's just that extra layer of protection if you're doing anything on your laptop that you don't want stolen. The other thing we should talk about while we're on this kind of security tip is Touch ID and password. So Touch ID is using your fingerprint to unlock your computer. I recommend using it. You can turn it on here. You can add as many fingerprints as you want. I have one finger here saved, but you can add multiple fingers. Most people will kind of use their index finger or their thumb. You can choose whichever one you want, um, and you can have multiple fingers added so that you can unlock your Mac with multiple fingers. This is also where you change your password. Make sure you've got a good, strong password set. There's going, there are going to be times when your Mac asks for your password in order to re-enable Touch ID. That's normal. And here you can set all the different things that you can use Touch ID for if you wish. Unlocking your Mac is kind of the most obvious, but you can use it for Apple Pay. You can use it to autofill passwords. Uh, you can use it with fast user switching, etc. There you have it. Five tips for setting up your new Mac. If you found this useful, please give this video a like. Subscribe if you wish, and I'll see you in the next one.